What's metabolism? Something that breaks down your food. Right? That's catabolism, not metabolism. I'm, all I know is I have a high metabolism. <laughs> do you? <laughs> and how do you know that? I don't like gain weight really. Okay. How do you know that's not that you have poor digestion? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. How do you know it's not poor absorption? Exactly. And that's why you poop so much. Because you don't absorb it. So when people talk about having a fast metabolism, what do they mean? Based on that definition. How would you interpret that? They break down the food quicker. No. Do they build up quicker as well? The hell's a fast metabolism? What is metabolism? Do you remember? The sum. Oh, it's the of sum. Of the reactions. All of the catabolism and yeah. all of the anabolism. anabolism. Mm -hmm. metabolism. Okay, so if metabolism is the sum of anabolism and catabolism, you have anabolic processes in your body. You have catabolic processes in your body. When you add them all together, we refer to them as metabolism. Is there actually a metabolism? Or is metabolism like just what results from anabolism and catabolism? I guess. It's the bottom line. So can you have a fast metabolism if you don't even have a metabolism? No, you can. Sure. You put money in your bank account and you take money out of your bank account. Those are the two things that happen to your bank account. The sum total of those two has a name. A balance. A balance. Or exchange. Say, something. Yep. But uh, we don't care what we call it. it. But it can't be fast or slow. It just is. So what are they talking about when they say, so, I have a fast metabolism? Maybe there's more catabolic going on than build up. Maybe there's more anabolic going on than catabolic. More build up? What is a fast metabolism? Jazz said he had a fast metabolism. But do we ha does he even have a metabolism? No. He doesn't have a metabolism. Fast, slow, or in between. You would say fast, slow, or half fast. Um, he doesn't have a metabolism. He only has anabolism and catabolism. There is no metabolism as a thing. It's just a measure of those things. So when Jazz is talking about a, having a fast metabolism, mm -hmm. what he meant was a fast metabolic rate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's a huge difference because if you say metabolic rate, this means something that's measurable and monitorable. You could say I have a high metabolic rate. You could, if that were true. Mm -hmm. But we may find out that it's not. So you can measure it by measuring the level of oxygen consumption. You could also measure it by the level of CO2 production uh -huh. or by heat production. Okay, what's heat production? How do we measure heat production? How do we measure it? Yeah. What do we use as a unit of heat? Calories. Calories. Calorometer. Okay. So calories, or calories used, are directly linked to oxygen intake and carbon dioxide exhalation. Mm -hmm. We could use any of those three things as long as we understand the formula relationship between them. Relate metabolic rate to mass and it goes up with increases in mass. Mm -hmm. So for you to go up a flight of stairs, you use less fuel than for Thomas to go up the same flight of stairs. He's got a greater mass. So, who has the higher metabolism? The couch potato or the athlete? The athlete does more work Okay. than the couch potato. And what does that mean to their metabolic rate? Their turnover is faster. Okay, they're consuming more fuel. Yeah. And what about metabolic rate per square inch of surface area. The athlete is m in more inefficient. Uh, there's more heat loss because he is s skinnier. So who's got a faster metabolic rate? Higher. 
higher per unit of surface area. The mouse or the, sh the shrew, the mouse or the elephant? The bigger the animal, the more efficient they become because the relative area of surface is decreasing. Like. Metabolic rate does not vary from mammal to mammal or human to human at all per unit of surface area. But that's not quite true. Mm -hmm. The true statement would be that it doesn't change at all. Plus or minus. No, oh, do I remember? 3%, I think. Jazz. If metabolic rate does not change from one human being to another human being per unit of surface area, or elephant, or shrew, or any other mammal, all mammals have the same metabolic rate in such tight plus or minus a percentage point or two mm. that we could say same. Okay, I'll give you 99 cents. I'll give you 101 cents. Do we really care about the penny? You know, no, we don't. We care about the 99. So, can you then say to me, can you then look me in the eye and say, I've got a fast metabolic rate? So we all have the same metabolic rate and we all have the same metabolism. Well, our metabolisms could be different if we had such a thing, but metabolism is an, ana is an imaginary concept. What we have is your anabolic processes and your catabolic processes. You might be at the moment high in anabolic processes, but you don't actually have a, nobody has a metabolism. But a metabolism is something that happens within our body. Metabolism is something that happens, exactly. So at that point, you can't look me in the eye and say, I have a fast metabolism, because that would make no sense. And you can't say, I have a high metabolic rate, because it's the same as everybody else's. Mm. All we can say is that the active person is going to need more fuel than the inactive person. And yet, you will find almost all leaders in the raw food movement will discuss with you the idea that fast metabolic rate, slow metabolic rate, fast metabolizers, slow metabolizers, and that only, only slow metabolizers can even think to get away with eating a lot of fruit. There are few and far between slow metabolizers who can get away with eating lots of fruit for fuel. Otherwise, as raw foodists, we must eat lots of fat because we are in the high metabolizers group, which makes absolutely no sense on its own, but then they add the, clin the clincher and they go, but it, because somebody's going to say, but what about Doug Graham? He eats a lot of fruit. And they're going to go, yes, but Doug Graham does a fantastic amount of exercise. So they're saying I'm a fast metabolizer while they're explaining that I, I'm a fast metabolizer because I'm an athlete, but I can eat fruit because I'm an athlete, but only slow metabolizers can eat fruit. Because they're saying that they're saying gibberish. Slow metabolizers shouldn't eat much fat, only the highs. No, they're not even saying slow metabolizers oh. shouldn't eat much fat. They're implying that slow metabolizers don't use as many calories uh -huh. per unit of time, so they can eat fruit instead of fat, which is rich in fuel. That they need all that fat because they're they're in the sexy fast metabolizer group mm -hmm. that everybody wants to get into. That's right. And people buy it and end up with fear of fruit. I can't eat fruit because I'm a fast metabolizer. I think Jazz doesn't even know what a metabolizer is. He's telling me he's a fast metabolizer. 
But now, you know more. And you're going to have to come up with some other reason why. Why do you stay skinny no matter what you eat? Oh, there must be a reason, right? It could be you don't absorb well, you don't metabolize well, don't digest well, or you're actually pretty darn active and you're growing muscles that are obviously, there's some muscles in there. You couldn't squat what you were squatting or pull out of the rack what you were pulling. People don't digest well. What does that mean? Well, some people digest their food better than other people digest their food. People say, I can eat anything. And there's other people say, I have to be really careful what I eat. We're talking about digestive efficiency. It could be, it could make a difference, but metabolic rate does not change to plus or minus a couple of percentage points. It makes sense. It actually makes sense. Mm. Go try to argue that at a raw food conference where everybody else, everybody else is saying the opposite from the stage. Everybody has a fast metabolism. And everybody has a fast metabolism. 90% of the drivers interviewed say they are above average. Can that be possible? No, the bell curve says 90% have to fall into the average. <laughs>